We have some very special friends of ours from Israel that are here. We have Daniel Cohen from Newsmax, and he'll tell you what else he's doing these days. And his wonderful, beautiful wife, Paige, they're here from Israel for just a week. So let's welcome them up on the stage. I love you guys. I really love you guys. You guys are wonderful. I'll tell you what, these two, I saw them out in Israel. Uh, when, what, was that January? January? January, right? And they shine so bright in Israel. God is using these two in marvelous ways, wonderful ways. They're going to talk about some things that have been going on. Can you kind of share a little bit? We are a little bit passionate about Israel. So if we get our blood boiling here, maybe it'll, maybe it'll spill over. But we wanted to say, say first, Pastor Joe, we're thankful for your friendship, and we, our family loves oh, you. Well, we love we you guys. We are thankful we... to be here, and to all of you, we want you to know we love you too. We consider this, Orange County, this part, uh, our home away from home, and when we're not in Israel, and we just feel a, such a warm welcome. In fact, uh, Paige's dad's down right. here, he Dean. He goes to our church, Dean, and yes. So, yeah. This is wonderful. This is yeah. great. <laughs> so. We love Dean, by the way. He is yeah. amazing. Yeah. And he leads worship on some Tuesday nights and all, and we just love his passion, and we are blessed. But yeah, and he keeps us updated on yeah. you guys, too. So we, we thank you so much. I want to say first that we, are, uh, we feel your prayers. Yeah. We know that you are praying for us. Uh, we know that on Tuesdays, the, even the, the children's group that meets here on Tuesday evening, they write cards and notes, and they pray for us by name. And I want you to know that means everything yeah. to us because we feel like we're exactly where God wants us to be in this moment, just like Esther for a time such as this, Amen. to be watchmen on the walls of Jerusalem and to just be a truth teller. Uh, I've actually had a change of address in the last few weeks. I'm not with Newsmax anymore. I was the Jerusalem correspondent, but now uh, I'm on the Real Life Network. They wow, awesome. Yeah. That's so good. Uh, it's Pastor Jack Hids. It's Calvary Chapel, Chino Hills. They just launched a news division. They asked me to lead it and to build it. We are brick by brick leading it. And so uh, we're thrilled about that. But I also want to remind everybody, since October 7th, 26,240 missiles were launched in, into Israel. So let's talk about that. I yeah. mean, what is, what is life like with all these missiles coming in? Well, I want to give it to Paige here for a second, but even just since Vertical View, when we were here over the summer, um, it's been active. <laughs> we, we, we don't have slow news days in Israel. I actually pray, Lord, it would be great to have a slow news day. It just doesn't <laughs> happen. And uh, the, the stories have only amplified and intensified. I know you know about the Iranian missile strike, Iran, the Islamic Republic, which doesn't want to get its hands dirty. And so they have something called proxies. You probably, what's a, what's a proxy? These are the people, because Iran doesn't want to get their hands dirty. They have Hamas, they have Hezbollah, they have the Houthis. There's a ring of fire is what it's called surrounding Israel. These are people that want to destroy Israel. What they don't know is it's never going to happen. That's right. They don't know because we've read the book and we know how the story ends. And we know that God made a covenant with himself that he would protect Israel. He said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. You're the apple of my eye. And, uh, and so the, they think, they think, even Jeremiah 31 says, unless the sun, the moon, the moon, the stars cease to exist, Israel, that's when I will break my promise. God can't break a promise. And so you need to know that. We need to know that. Yes, and as do. a body of Christ of believers, we need to represent that to the Jewish people. Amen. Right? There was a historic uh, missile strike uh, uh, October 1st, and I was on a plane to Washington, D.C. to pray vote stand with the bad Wi-Fi, and I got a message from Paige. Do you want to take it from here for a second? Yeah. Sure, yeah, and, and to back up a little bit on October 1st earlier that day and, and give a little bit of context what that day looked like for our family, our three children, they all attend Israeli school, and, and I took them all to school like a normal morning. We had had more of an increase in rocket activity in, the, in central Israel where we live. We live in a city called Herzliya, north of Tel Aviv. And, um, and I dropped the kids off and went on my way to do some grocery shopping in the downtown Herzliya, and there, was, there were sirens and rocket attacks right in our city. And I knew that it sent the kids to the bomb shelter, which is not something that they're unfamiliar with. Um, they haven't had to do it at school so many times. We are very blessed to have a bomb shelter in our home. And so normally we have the, the comfort of going there together as a family if we're home. But you, you can't predict when this is going to happen. And you have to keep putting one foot in front of the other and living life. And so that's mm -hmm. what we've chosen to do in adopting kind of that Israeli spirit. And, uh, and that day... I found myself in a public shelter out and about with a bunch of strangers and 
it's a horrible feeling as a mother to feel like I'm nowhere near my kids and I don't know how they're doing and I don't know if they're scared and they need a hug. I mean, obviously they're scared, but you know, it's, it's, it's impossible to be apart from them in these moments. And I was able to call our son. He's in sixth grade and he answered the phone and previous times that uh, they've had rocket attacks while they were at school, he's pretty, been pretty cool and collected. And he said, I'm, I'm okay. You know, it's a little crazy, but we're okay. And this time he said, you know, mom, it feels different today. It just feels different. I feel scared and I want to come home. And I said, okay, absolutely. You know, can you get in touch with your sisters and see if they are also wanting to come home because I can't reach them. And he wasn't allowed to, to leave the classroom um, for safety reasons. And so I went to pick him up at school and we came home and had a little lunch. And then I got a call from our 10 year old daughter. I'm ready to come home, mom. You know, she uh-huh. called from another friend's phone. And so I went and got her and the little seven year old Hannah, she made it till the end of the school day, <laughs> which was pretty courageous and amazing, but it was interesting just speaking with the kids about how they felt. Um, And Caleb, who's pretty in tune with the Holy Spirit, he just felt like something is different today. And uh, Mm. I thought that was really interesting. Caleb and Olivia, who are in fifth and sixth grade, also remarked that, you know, there were a lot of kids crying in the the upper grades Mm. and a lot of kids really upset. And that's not how it used to be. And it seems that kids, they're just, they know a lot more now about what's going on. This war has gone on for over a year and they, mm-hmm. they just know too much. And the littler kids are slightly protected by just less information at their fingertips. And, um, and this was how our day was. Like by lunchtime, we're you know, all home and trying to process what happened and then pick ourselves up and kind of rejoin like yeah. the rhythm of the day. This is, this is how life goes. You, yeah. you move on. And so it was taking kids to sports and getting them dropped off. And again, Dan is on a plane while all this is happening. And this is the day before Rosh Hashanah, which is the Jewish New Year. Uh, it's not actually the biblical New Year. Some of you might know that, but uh, the, the feast that actually takes place on Rosh Hashanah is the Feast of Trumpets. So we're getting ready to celebrate the Feast of Trumpets slash Rosh Hashanah, and it's a big, big meal that people spend with their families. And so I was out and about doing grocery shopping. Everybody was doing the same thing, that last minute rush, and everything felt completely normal again. And uh, I didn't have a check in my spirit or or any notion that there was something brewing that day. Um, People were acting normal. And so, you know, at one point, I was about 6.30 that evening, I got this in, interesting indication on my phone that I had never received from something called the Home Front Command that said, uh, you need to stay close to a, a shelter and uh, no large public gatherings. Uh, that's interesting. Okay. And other people's phones were buzzing at the same time. We're all in the park. I thought, well, that's weird. Okay. Um, and about 15 minutes later, I get a call from our daughter, Olivia's gymnastics coach, and she says... Uh, Who's coming to get Olivia? I need you to come get her now. Uh, there's, and it was a little bit of lost in translation, but just come now. And I had no context. I said, okay, great. So I dropped everything. And as I'm walking out the door, uh, I get a call from a friend of mine that lives in the neighborhood. And, and she said, oh, you know, Shana Tova, this is what we say at the new year. I have a gift for you. I want to come over and bring you a gift. Is this a good time? I said, it's not a good time, actually. I'm running out the door. I got a cryptic message from the coach, and I'm going to get Olivia. And she says to me, well, why don't you send Caleb and Hannah over to my house? Little did I know that that would be such a blessing once we now know what transpired that evening. And so it was such the hand of God even intervening in that moment. And had we not had the attacks from Hezbollah earlier in the day, I probably would have been tempted to say, ah, they're okay. Caleb can watch his sister. I'll be back soon. But I sent them on their way. And uh, rushed down to Tel Aviv and went in to pick up my daughter. And everything, again, felt totally normal. Hugged and kissed the coach and said Happy New Year and saw a few other parents and kids that were getting picked up at the same time. And uh, we got in the car and we started driving home. And we made it about two minutes before we started hearing the siren. So you, what happens is if you're in a zone where there's an attack, you hear a siren outside, but you also get the alerts on your phone through something called the, the red alert, rocket alert. And s- No, it's okay. Yeah, good. And so at this particular moment, my phone is like dinging nonstop in a way I've never seen before. And if any of you have ever seen that app, you know, it's just showing every city in Israel, basically. And I'm trying to figure out, is this definitely our area? Because sometimes you can hear sirens in an adjacent city and might not affect you. And I'm rolling down the window. I'm like, no, that's definitely here, you know. And I'm trying to drive and look at my phone. And Olivia's already starting to stress. 
And, uh, and so I just looked for the first possible place to pull over. It's not the first time that we've been caught in a, a rocket attack while we were driving or while we were out and about. Um, so we, we know what to do. And you're looking, you have 60 seconds to figure out where to leave the car. Um, oftentimes, if there's traffic, people will just leave their cars in the middle of the road. You just turn your car off, grab your keys, and run. You're looking for the nearest safe space. A shelter I, is I ideal. Just, I mean, this is so foreign to us here. I mean, did you hear what she just said? 60 seconds, where, wherever your car's at, you stop. Even, she said, uh, uh, the, in the middle of the street, you'll just stop, leave your car there, and run for the bomb shelter. And that's just so foreign. And I, uh, we talked about this in the first service. No country should live like that. We don't do that here. If, if we had, I think you brought this up, if, if, if let's say Mexico was going to send bombs into us, we, we wouldn't live like that. We'd say, well, let's take them out completely because you're not going to do that to this country. But yet they allow it in Israel. I had to intervene with that yeah. because that has to change. And as we pray, that's yeah. a, a way to pray. This has to change because it's for them to live like that. And they've been living like that for many, many years. The, the Israeli people they, in the north, they've evacuated the north. Uh, what, last time I went out there, because people, they, they refuse to go back to their homes anymore. I talked to some of the people that lived in the north, and they said, we're not going back to our homes until this is gone. We don't want this threat anymore. 60,000. What's that, 60,000? 60, 60 and 75,000. People and so displaced, Hezbollah, displaced from their homes. Yeah. Exactly. Living Hezbollah. in hotels or at, at, in, uh, with other yeah. family members. Go ahead. Yeah, Hezbollah is, is controlling the north, which is why Israel has finally said enough is enough. And that's why you've seen the escalation with Hezbollah in the last year. And by the way, the 60 seconds, we live in a city called Herzliya, just outside Tel Aviv. So 69, the 60 to 90 seconds that we have, if you're right across the Gaza border, these people have less than 15 seconds when they hear the sirens to be in a bomb shelter or to be in a... Think about this. If you're making food for your kids, what if you want to take a shower? You can't be in the shower. You have 15 seconds to get in a bomb shelter. Just how, how that would change your life. Yeah. So as Israelis, we're tough. Man, Israelis are resilient. People aren't sitting in bomb shelters all day. The siren goes... We know the drill, you go downstairs, you seek shelter. The reality is the chances of getting hit by a rocket, not very high, getting hit by shrapnel, a higher chance. So that's why yes. it's the psychological warfare. It's the psychological terror. The sirens go, you see all these people run. You see it because you go inside. That's what you do. Otherwise, you, why take that risk? So back to your story. So you're, you've pulled over. Yeah, so I, I made basically the first right-hand turn so I could get off this main road that we're on and just threw the car in park and uh, grabbed the keys, and I, I saw two men across the street already laying down on the sidewalk, which is what you're to do if you don't have a shelter and cover your head. And so I said, okay, Olivia, let's cross the street and lay down next to those men. And, uh, and so we ran over there, and we got down on the ground, and I, I had Olivia on the ground. I kept having to remind her to put her head down, and I was covering her with my body and just praying, you know, Lord, you got to protect us in this moment. I had no idea what was about to transpire or how bad it was going to be. It's not been fun previous times when we're caught outside without a shelter, but it's a smattering of rockets. And this was the largest single ballistic missile attack ever to take place on a country. Yes. And we had no idea that yeah. that's what was about to go down. And so we're, we're, we have a video to show, but I'll, I'll just give a little bit of context. We were laying down on the sidewalk and um, I started to see these missiles sailing across the night sky. It's, it's like Star Wars. It's like not even, it doesn't feel real. Mm -hmm. It is a surreal vision to behold and you can't really not look at it. Um, it's right. powerful and they were far enough away from us that I, I started recording with my phone. Like this is unbelievable. I was 40 missiles flying through the air at a, at a distance that's not gonna affect us, okay? Thank you, Lord, and praying for Israel. And, and then suddenly it became clear we couldn't see them coming. There was another big slew of missiles that came much closer to us and started to be intercepted by Iron Dome uh, right overhead, at which point we needed to move locations. So we ran, the other two men ran, and we stayed with them, and we basically ran around the corner so that this little retaining wall would be protecting us on the proper side. Now that we could see where they were coming from, uh, we changed our locations. And as we changed locations... Um, there was a cardboard box on the sidewalk and I picked it up and I, when we got to that second location, I just hunkered over Olivia and I, I covered really both of our faces with the box. Not that it was going to protect us from anything, just to, just to not look anymore mm -hmm. yeah. because Olivia couldn't look away. I, I, at that point, I, I just had set my phone down and I'm just praying over her and what 
continued to transpire was then hearing the interceptions, which is scarier than seeing the rockets fly through the air because it's so loud and it is so unnerving. And, it, and at this point, you're like, I'm not looking, you know, but they sound like they're right behind you. It just sounds like it's a foot away from you. And you re really have no idea where they are. Um, and all I could do was, was pray and ask for God's protection. And uh, at, at that point, um, my phone died. My battery died. This is where the video ends, and I can give some context maybe after, after that. So I'm, I'll just say real quickly, uh, I'm on a plane, an LL plane. Uh, the Red Alert app, I know that many of you have, and yeah. I know that when it goes off, many of you just pray for Israel, and thank you for doing that. Home front command is different, so this LL flight's full of Israelis. Uh, mine goes off, the guy sitting next to me, his goes off, all around the plane, eh, 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 the whole plane. And so I have the bad Wi-Fi, which comes and goes when you're on a plane, right? And Paige sends me starts sending me messages. I know this Iran strike is imminent. Uh, it takes a while for the missiles to come. And then I see this video come f from my wife. We ask for your protection, God. We ask for your protection right now. Um, in the name of Yeshua. Uh, we ask you to protect Israel, protect all Israel. Um, Olivia, put your head down. Put your head down. Put your head down. Where should we go? Run, 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 run. Hey, Sit, 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 sit. Sit, head down. Wow. Wow, I can't even imagine. Why don't you go ahead and just Yeah. It's hard it's hard to watch. Yeah. So the end of that video, um, the phone died and we stayed in that location for, I am not sure, maybe five or seven more minutes. It's hard to say. And uh, the, the booms, the interceptions, and the not even knowing, am I hearing just interceptions or pieces of shrapnel falling to the ground? Like it was really hard to decipher what we were even potentially hearing. And uh, it was extremely overwhelming. Sure. Uh, all I could do was just just keep calling in the name of Yeshua. It was just all just kept coming out over and over again, and that's this is the only thing that brought us peace in that moment. Mm -hmm. um, there was a little lull in the noise, at which point the two men that we were um, sheltering with on the ground uh, ran again to another location, and we stayed with them. So we ran to a synagogue that was um, not too far. And there were four or five other people, um, basically with all of our backs up to the, the doors to the synagogue, which was locked and closed and no mamad, no um, safe room or shelter uh, access. But it was a safer position to be in now that we had seen the rockets and we knew the direction shrapnel would be coming. It, it left the building at our backs and we were facing west. It was, it was a uh, better place to be. And it was in that moment feeling like at least there's this building next to us. I think protecting us from the right direction that um, all I could do was just start to weep. And you think that you want to be strong and hold it together for your kids, but this was just, this was the body's response yeah. um, to the stress of the moment. And I was just crying over Olivia and she's crying under me. And, but we were just, we were just one embracing while we waited for, for it to end. Um, Eventually, the sounds and the booms st stopped, and people started to walk away. And so I said, let's get back in the car and, and keep driving. And, and we ran to the car, and I realized I don't even have my keys. And so I, we ran to the first location because I had left my purse and my keys on the, on the sidewalk. Mm. And I picked them up. We ran to the car, and we started driving. We made it about two more minutes toward the direction of home. And uh, there was another huge barrage. And so... Thank the Lord Almighty we were able to pull the car over. This time there was a building nearby because our first location, there was just parks and open space and trees pretty much um, until we got to that synagogue. And so 
this was a much better scenario where we were able to you know, pull the car over and, um, and get into the public shelter for that apartment building. So we ran in there with probably 30, 35 other people. Um, at this point, I was able to borrow someone's charger and start to charge my phone. And we, we rode the rest of the attack out in that shelter, maybe 30 minutes of nonstop um, barrages and, and huge, yeah, huge booms, like almost more of an awareness of the, the shaking in, inside the bomb shelter. I think for many people, it was, very, it was the scariest thing they've ever experienced in yeah, a bomb shelter sure, because yeah. the ballistic missiles are so large and they're yeah. so much more powerful than the rockets that we're accustomed to. So yeah. it was jarring and unnerving for, for everyone who was even in a safe place. Yeah. Um, and during that time, I was got my phone charged up enough to start to message Daniel and let him know, you know, what's going on. And I think what was happening is your messages were coming into me, but mine weren't com- coming out of the yeah. shelter. And so his messages got more and more like nine one one, are you okay? And yeah. I could just I s- understand how very stressed he was. When Olivia, yeah. when, when Olivia says in that video, um, "God, please protect us." My, I felt an arrow grow up to my heart. There was nothing I could do in that moment as yeah. a father and a husband, as somebody, men, we like to be protectors of our families. But all I could do was pray. What else can I do? So I was praying Psalm 91, the same, Psalm 91 over and over again. And uh, there was also a, a, a terror attack on the ground. As that was going on, there, yeah, were, there were gunmen right. on the loose shooting people at uh, train stop. There was a woman with a small baby who was killed. The baby in the stroller lived. The mother was killed. You know, they, they shoot and they don't care, right? And so I'm seeing these messages, not in real time. I don't know what's, you know, because I'm in a plane. <laughs> and, and I'm telling Paige, get out of Tel Aviv. Get out of there. I mean, there's multiple things going on. I don't know. Are you okay? How are you? I'm seeing these videos come in. Uh, it was something. And... I know what you're thinking. Why are you doing this? <laughs> yes. We get people asking us, even our family, you know, that offered after October 7th, they said, we'll buy your plane ticket, come home. Yeah. We are, you know, pages from Orange County. And we moved to, God plucked us up from Westlake Village in LA and we lived in San Diego together and, uh, for almost 20 years. And why are we there? People, people ask me personally, you are, why are you subjecting your children to yeah. this. Yeah. And we both prayed. We were on our faces crying out, especially after October 7th and those first days, like, Lord, if you want us to leave, we'll go. Yeah. But the Lord never gave us that, yeah. that green light. He said, no, I want you exactly where you are. You're a truth teller. I need you there. You've been prepared for such a time as this. Yeah. People need to know, and they need somebody that can, that can tell the truth. Not all these other news organizations and these other people with platforms are telling truth. I need you. I can protect you. I will protect your family. I will protect your kids better than you can. Trust me. Amen. And we got that confirmation. Amen. 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 And I, I know that not everyone understands that. I get that. But when we pray, we say, Lord, we want to be in the center of your will. Yes, and there's right. nothing better than being in the center of God's will, even if it doesn't make sense to other people. That's right. we, had, we had a family friend offer us his chateau in the south of France. <laughs> Would I like to go to a chateau in the south of France? <laughs> Would you like to? Sure. <laughs> but not outside of God's will. Is that where God wanted us in that moment? <laughs> no. Absolutely not. <laughs> and so we remain because we trust and we know that God has our backs. And I will just tell you, I know that you're probably not facing this, right? But if you are in a place, I want you to know you need to be in the center of God's will for your life. Amen. And even if other people say, this doesn't make any sense, why are you doing this? Doesn't matter. It's okay. That's right. It doesn't matter. That's right. What God tells you to do, you have to be obedient yes. to do. Not my will, but your will be done, Lord. And it's so much, yeah, and to see that, and I just want to echo this again. They are such a bright light in that place, and God needs people like that. God could... You know, he could choose whoever he wants to, but these two said, send me, we'll, we'll go, Lord. And so the, the hand of the Lord is on their lives, and God is using you in wonderful ways. So what a blessing. And uh, realize, you have a family here, you, you, we're constantly praying for you guys, but it's, there's no better place to be, you're right, but in the center of God's will. 
And so I know you guys both have great personal ministries out there. Uh, I know that because uh, your daddy keeps me <laughs> informed that. So God's using you there. Can you share maybe some testimonies how this terrible thing that's happening there, but God. So what is that but God in your lives? Interestingly enough, just the decision to stay after October 7th, if we didn't do anything else, has created deeper relationships with the people around us. Yes. Even people who we've spent years trying to get like deeper, go deeper, open up, like more trust in the relationships. The decision to stay, people just respect it. Yeah. And they see that we're not, you know, like fair weather fans kind of thing. It's yeah. like, okay, you you really want to be here. Yeah. And you really love us to be here. Yeah, and we yeah. care about the people around us. And, yeah. and one of the things that's hard about even coming to Southern California is like, what's going to happen when we're not there and we can't be there to like just yes. be, be friends and neighbors to the people around us? You, you almost wow. don't want to yeah. miss that opportunity, but there's been a deepening in relationships this year that has no other explanation than right. just the decision to stay. Yeah. And that's been powerful. Yeah, because it's one thing to say, oh, we love you, but to actually be there, you're mm -hmm. showing them, you're demonstrating, you really do love them because you guys are risking your lives. And so you're, it's not just empty words. Uh, your testimony, just yeah. being there, a living testimony, it shows them that, wow, there's something, something about you guys. Why are you guys here? Yeah. And I'm sure it opens wonderful doors for you guys to share. There are people, yeah, who, who have wanted to leave and didn't have anywhere to go. And so they look at us and they say, you could be in Huntington Beach on a boat. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> That's wonderful. But we feel like we are exactly where God wants us to be. And there, again, there's just a great peace that, uh, that, that comes with that. We wouldn't, we wouldn't trade that. And so was it frightening? Is, are there moments? Yes. Have we been, like I said, on our faces in prayer? Absolutely. Yes. Have you ever been in a position like that where you had to say, Lord, I don't have a month. I don't have a year. Like, I need to hear from you now. Yes. We have children that are counting on us. You know, so if, we're, if you want us to go, we'll go, like I said. But, uh, but the Lord said, I've got your back and your front and both of your sides. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. The Lord said, I've, I've got you. And so uh, that is our mindset. And yeah. we, I feel like if we had any other mindset, how could we do this? How could we? Yeah. We have to be reliant on the Lord. We have to trust uh, in the Lord. Amen. And so our prayer life has gone deeper, but the friendships, like Paige has said, have gone way deeper. Just people saying, you could, you could have left, you could leave but you chose to stay. What's different about you guys? Yes. And we're having conversations with Jewish people whose hearts have been ripped open after October 7th. The congregation that we attend, uh, we've, we have Jewish people who have, who've accepted Yeshua as Messiah. Amen. Went to a, Amen. yeah. <laughs> Paige and the kids went to a baptism in the Jordan. And, and we are seeing the, the hearts that they're, you know, the, these are the Sabras, these are cac they're tough people with soft, that's the Israeli spirit, but we're seeing these people whose hearts are softening. So right now is our opportunity as the body of Christ, as a church to, I, I'm, if you were here on Vertical View, I said this, but I'm going to say it again, guys, this is our chance as a church to love the Jewish people in your life. Amen. Love them yes. well. Yes. You don't even have to hit them in the head with the Bible and tell them yeah. what the New Testament says and talk that's about right. Jesus. Just yeah. Love them. That's right. Just your love right. will, yeah. they will go, what is up? Just like the question saying, yeah. what's up with you two? We're Cohen's. Yes. <laughs> um, we're Cohen's. So, you know, people in Israel have a hard time putting us in a box and they don't, under, they don't get us, which we're fine with. They especially don't get me. I'm a Cohen on one side. I'm a Levi on the other, my mom and my dad. So can't get it, any more Jewish than that. Doesn't get more Jewish. <laughs> doesn't get more priestly. We pray number six over our kids in Hebrew. We sing the songs too. And, and so I, I tell people and I encourage people, and I know you have Jewish people that are, yeah. that are part of this congregation. Yeah, yes, we do. You can be Jewish yeah. and believe in Jesus. That's right. People tell me, and I've, I've gotten this, we've been in Israel for four years, next week will be four years. And people will say to me, oh, you, you can't be Jewish and believe in Jesus. <laughs> and I say, Jesus is Jewish. That's right. <laughs> I love it. That's right. I love it. And they go, oh yeah. So I, I don't get lost in the terminology, oh, you're a messianic, uh, you're a Christian Jew. I just say, I'm a Jewish follower of Yeshua, Jesus. I believe he is who he said he, he was, and that's it. And by the way, if you're Jewish and you're following Jesus, I mean, you want to talk about being, the, it's actually the Gentiles that are the ones gra that's right. they, they come out grafted, grafted in. in. Yeah, that's right. There's nothing better. And so I, I will tell this too, the Jewish people who, who have 
who say, people will say to me, oh, well, why pray to Jesus when you can pray to God? And I say, oh, have you ever read Proverbs 30, verse 4? If you've never read this, check it out, Proverbs it. 30, verse 4, because That's the right. Old Testament, the New Testament, the Hebrew Bible, they, they work together. And I can tell you about you know, the, right. the Micah, the, the Messiah will be born in Bethlehem, uh, Zechariah, who will ride into the old city on the back of a donkey. Uh, you know, Isaiah talks about born of a virgin. They'll cast lots for his, you know, right? But Proverbs 30, verse 4, which is Proverbs, yes. the Jewish book of wisdom in the Hebrew Bible, not the Brit Hadashah, not the New Testament. It says, God has a, a son. That's right. What is his, his name? name? Surely you know. And there's different translations. It says it right there. Yes. God has a son. That, was a, that one really rocked, it blew Amen. my mind when I read Amen. that. And so when I share that, they say, it says that? It Amen. says that. Fact check me. Yes. Check it out. Proverbs 30, verse Amen. 4. Amen. 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 Let's give the Lord a hand for these two guys. We're so blessed to have you here. And can you agree with me? Let's pray the Lord's blessing on them. Let's pray that the Lord continues to use them for his glory. Lord God, Lord, we thank you for this family, Lord. We thank you so much for the work of your Holy Spirit in their lives. Lord, we thank you for the calling. You said in your word, make your call and your election sure. Lord, and they are sure 100% that they're supposed to be there in Israel. So Lord, we pray that as it says in your word also, let your light so shine before men that they'll see your good works and they'll glorify your Father in heaven. Oh, Lord, continue to shine through each and every one of them, Lord God. Thank you for this family. Thank, thank you for these children, Lord. Lord, they shine so bright also, Lord. Lord, we thank you. Just as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were in the fiery furnace, well, we know you showed up and you were there very close to them during that difficult time. And we know you're close with this family in a special way. Lord God, we pray for this new season right now in their lives. We pray in Jesus' name that you would do far more exceedingly, abundantly, above all they can ask or think of. Lord, I also think of another verse that said, I has not seen, nor has ear heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man those things which God has prepared for those that love you. Lord, we pray that you would reveal these things to them day by day. We pray, Lord, that Lord, during this difficult time that you would bind them closer and closer together and closer and closer to you. Lord, bless, Lord. And Lord, I pray for this congregation and those watching us online. I pray that you'd remind us day by day to pray for this wonderful family, for the Cohen family. Lord God, may you put them on our hearts continually. And Lord, may we realize the battle's won. You're on the throne. Amen. And Lord God, we have great weapons. The weapons of our warfare, they're not fleshly, they're not carnal. You told us, Lord, they're mighty. May we use these mighty weapons continually as we pray for this family. In Jesus' name we pray, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen.